Hi. How many times uh, do you go out and like people recognize you and you just like and you've never met these people just because they watch you in the news? It's it's quite often. And you know, people always ask. They're like, they're like, I bet this gets annoying, but uh, you know, I, I like watching you. I'm like, it's not annoying at all. My first, you know, this was when I was making the transition from. Uh, sports to news. I was trying to get through every newscast and just like, just flawless, not mess up anything. And I mean, it's just, it, you're going to mess up. People don't know this, they may not know this, is that in the desk, we actually have computer monitors that were, and computers, and that's how we're looking at scripts. They're actually built into the desk. I feel like this is the only genuine conversation I can have like all week. Ron Terrell, welcome to the Willpower Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Dude, I'm so excited to, to talk to you a little bit. So um, when I reached out to you, did you did you even remember me? I did. Okay, yeah, good. Because so and right before we, we got to uh, to talking, I was telling you that whenever I got in the business, I was 23 and you know, you were one of the people that I got to help early in my career. I would say it was probably like maybe the end of my first year or my second year. Um, but, um, and then, you know, kind of started following you on social and, and, uh, and I thought you'd be a great person to have on just to kind of like, just, just to get to hear what your career has been over the last almost 30 years. I know that's crazy. And and <laughs> 30 years. And you've been with the same company, Fox 23 News for almost 20 years, 18. Mm -hmm. It's a really long time for to, to be doing this. And, yeah. and and I'm I'm not just saying as far as like I mean that has to say a lot about you because I feel like you're in a business where you kind of have to prove yourself time and time again mm -hmm. even though, you know, kind of like in my business, it's like if you were a top producer last last year or last month, it's like, you got to do it all over again. And I feel like, mm -hmm. and I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because especially with how, how much, um, your business has changed. So you're, uh, an anchor at Fox 23 news and, uh, you do a little bit of other stuff that maybe we can get into, but I'm just kind of curious. I'm, I'm glad that you're here and, and glad that it kind of came full circle there. So, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so how old were you when you got in? Let's see. I would have been 20. Three, which is ironic because I work at Fox 23. But, um, well, I and started, ironic too because I just said that because you were started, 23. That's exactly. crazy. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, you know, when I was in college, I, I interned at KOCO in Oklahoma City. And, you know, and I, I know the business has changed. I would still recommend people interning, uh, if they're in college and they're trying to get into this business just because it, it gives you a, you know, an inside look at what the business is like, basically. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I, I shot video, I did some editing, stuff like that. And then I got my first job at 23. Is it harder now or easier to get into the news uh, world right now than it was back then? You know, I mean, I, I think it may be a little bit easier now. And that's not, you know, it's not a knock on anybody coming out of school or anything like that. But it's just, it's, the business has changed so much during the pandemic. So many people got out of the business. Um, and it's created a lot of openings, especially producer jobs and kind of behind the scenes jobs. There's a lot more of that available jobs like mine, uh, on air jobs. Those are still pretty tough to get, but there's more talent coming out of college, right out of college, stepping into markets this size. Do you think a lot of people, um, in let's say in your shoes that they've been doing it for a long time with all the changes that, that have happened, I would say this was already kind of up in the, in up and coming of like social media and different things like that. But I think COVID really speeded that up. Mm -hmm. Um, are you seeing a lot of people that are in your shoes, maybe leaving the business to kind of start their own thing? whether it's like a YouTube channel or like whatever they have, like since they've kind of maybe some of them have built like already a personal brand and people recognize, are you seeing that a lot or? I've seen that some, it hasn't been like, that hasn't been like the widespread thing. A lot of people are just, when they get out, they're getting out to go into, you know, PR or, or some other different business that's kind of associated with media. Um, I haven't seen it as much with getting a, you know, YouTube channels and things like that. I have seen a few people doing that. Um, but it hasn't been quite as widespread as you would think. And whenever you started, you were 23, but how long did it take you before you were like in front of the camera when you were working with like at a news station? Well, I started working at K10 television down in Ada. 
Uh, and I was on the air pretty much within a week doing reporting. Okay. And, and what what was cool about college, and it's even better now because you you know students are anchoring in college and things like that for their college broadcast. But back then, it was mostly stories that we did. And and then interning at KOCO also provided me an opportunity to do a few stories uh, when I'd go out and shoot things with uh, photographers and reporters and things like that. So I got a little bit of experience doing that. So when I stepped in uh, at K10 as like their bureau reporter, their Ada bureau, they were based in Sherman Denison. They still are, but um, I don't think they have the bureaus anymore. I, you know, was on the air pretty quickly, and then within about three or four months, I was the weekend sports anchor. Okay, so you started on really early. Yeah, because is that how you got on at Fox Twenty Three? Um, well, at Fox Twenty Three, basically, I I worked from I worked at K Ten for about a year. Started working at KOCO in Oklahoma City. I worked there for seven years, and I started as their reporter, photographer, sports for, reporter, photographer. Then I came up here. I, I worked my way up to sports director there. I came up here and was the sports director for a couple of years. Uh, and then moved over to news. What's your background with that? Like, as far as like, did you grow up playing sports? Like, what did you like, uh, did you, did you, or did you just have a passion for like, just watching a lot of it? Or I had a passion for it. I, I played some, I didn't play, you know, once I got to high school, um, the skills weren't, yeah, <laughs> weren't quite there. Where'd you, where you, you went to, I know you, you grew up in, or you grew up in Michigan. Yeah. But, um, where did you go to high school out there and everything? Mm -hmm. So, so was it Ada, like that job opportunity that brought you here to Oklahoma? No, my, um, I, I graduated high school in Michigan. My dad, he worked for Ford and he took a job with a company in Oklahoma city called Fred Jones. And basically the last year I was in high school, he was working for Fred Jones. They did some work with Ford. So he was kind of a liaison up there for them. Then we moved to Edmond. I went to OU for four years and then ended up uh, getting a job about a year after I graduated. So have, had you always, even like, let's say not playing in high school, like did you, were you still big into sports? Like as far as like? Oh yeah, it was growing up in Detroit, you had, you know, the Red Wings, the Tigers, the Lions. I mean, the Lions back then were pretty awful, but yeah. um, I did, we did have Barry Sanders there for a year before I left. Um, and then the uh, Pistons and the, you know, these, all these teams were winning championships and you know, it was just, it was a great atmosphere to grow up in if you were a sports fan. So it was always kind of a passion. We would go to, we'd go to dozens of games a year for all the teams and it was just, it was a blast. How was last year for you with the, with the lions? Uh, it was good. It, it was, was good. So you weren't like super heartbroken. Like you were just like, man, we just did it. And cause it was weird because it was like, for them to get to where they got, yeah. it, it was like amazing, right? Like even yeah. going back to 2007, 2008, whatever the mm -hmm. season was, they, they were the first team still to have ever gone yeah. uh, 0 and 16. 0 16, yeah. And, uh, but then to be that close, I feel like a lot of people like forgot forgot about that and they were like, man, like we were almost there, you know? So it was it was pretty surreal watching all that happen because, you know, I I went down and saw them play the Cowboys in the playoffs 10 years ago and they lost that game. And then pretty much since then, until Dan Campbell got there, no success whatsoever. And then watching last season, you knew, you could see it coming, how, how they were improving each year. So last year, when they started winning, it wasn't a big surprise, but it was still kind of surreal watching it all happen. And then they get to the playoffs, and you're thinking, is this going to be the same old Lions? And then it, it wasn't. And, you know, they're up on San Francisco at halftime in the NFC Championship game, and you're like, wow, this is, this is really happening. And then... You know, they kind of came crashing to earth in the second half, but I'm actually going down to see them play the Cowboys too oh, <laughs> this nice. weekend. So, so, I, so I'm kind of the opposite. Like I grew up playing sports. Um, I didn't play anything past high school, but I, I was never really like, I'll, I'll watch a game. Like I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, we have YouTube TV as like our, our like cable per se. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we have that is because my wife is, is like, she, she wants live TV. And I'm just like, why, why do we have live TV? But then she's like, she's like, I want to play football games in the weekends. And I'm like, you don't even know what a quarterback is. Like, why are you one? She was like, it's just, it's part of the fall, like all this stuff. And then, so, but like, if it's up to me, like, I don't like, I'll watch like a big game. And then I'm almost like, like, man, I wish I would have watched it. So like this weekend I saw that Alabama lost. Yeah. That was crazy. So I'm the guy that I'm like, 
it would have been cool to like watch <laughs> that game. It was something. But um, but anyway, so walk me through this because you have a lot of knowledge in this, but um, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about it. But two thousand, what season was it? Was it two thousand eight? Is that what it was? Whenever the zero and sixteen season? Zero and sixteen season. I think I believe. I believe it was 2000, 2008, 2007 or 2008. So that's back when they had Megatron, right? That was, I think that was right before, I'm trying to remember if they, they had just, had they just drafted him when they had him? Those seasons all run together for me because they were so bad. So I guess my question is, is that whenever they had Megatron, whenever that was, because it's not like even if they won one game the next season or two games or whatever, it was still not a, like you said, it, mm -hmm. it was, and then, and then they also had like a really good coach, didn't they? Did they, they hire, didn't they hire like a, they brought in, they had Bob, I know they had, I'm trying to remember after Bobby Ross, who they had, um, cause the Marty Morningweg was the coach when they lost 16 games. Um, they brought in, um, oh, who was it after that? Uh, this is age catching up with me because yeah. I can't remember. And it, I can't believe you said 10 years ago and 10 years ago is now 2014. I can't I believe that 2014 was 10 years ago. But what I was trying to get to is how do you, like based on what you do um, or, or used to do, but you're still pretty passionate about, you know, the game and, and it sounds like, you know, the, the stats and all that stuff. How do you have a team where you have like literally the best potentially wide receiver in the, in, in the league and a, a good coach and all these, like, it seems like they were doing the right things, but they just still weren't winning. Yeah, there was there was this time where if if anything weird could happen to a team, it would happen to them. Because you remember the the catch that the Megatron touched down at the end of the there was a Bears game, uh, and that was kind of the thing that started the whole what what exactly is a catch? Because he caught the ball, and then when he came down, it touched the ground, and. They, they said that they said it was incomplete and you know there was this whole uproar about it and that kind of started this whole what exactly is a catch in the end zone thing so there's one example of something that happens that to the lions <laughs> and it's just it's like this series of weird events that you're like this this is i guess the lion's bad luck um and it, it doesn't seem like they have that bad luck anymore they did campbell had kind of a boneheaded moment in the second game this season where he tried to run the the kicking unit on and they tried to snap at the same time and then they, they ended up having like 18 guys on the field at the same time so you know it happens occasionally but this is a team that seems like they they avoid that stuff yeah i nice. i've became i i don't I, I don't even say that i have a team but i do like to watch teams because of a story or because mm -hmm. of like a player so like right now and people, you know, that are from Oklahoma that are listening to this are probably going to hate me. But right now, like, I like watching the Texas Longhorns because of Arch Manning and mm -hmm. because of how, you know, good they are. They're, I mean, you know, and as a guy that went to OU, it, it, I mean, it pains me to say it, but I, I, I really think they're the best team in the country. So I told you I'm, after this, I'm heading to, to Dallas for a conference and mm -hmm. that's all day tomorrow. And then I, 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 uh, I'm actually taking my wife and my kid with me. And then, um, so, uh, we're like, Hey, just come. And then you guys can figure something out to do while I'm out all day tomorrow. And then we'll make a weekend out of it. So I'm, uh, I saw that it's not only, uh, the, Texas State Fair, but that's yeah. I, I didn't. I've never been to a game, so I was. I'm thinking. I'm still thinking about. I don't even know if tickets are available or not. But there are some. We we actually tried to get since we're going to the Lions Cowboys game Sunday. We were looking at you know, and we've gone to. I've gone to a bunch of OU Texas games, but I was like, this would be kind of cool to go. And I looked at the tickets, and they're they're kind of outrageous right now. Oh really? Yeah. So we might wait wait till tomorrow to see if any if they come down at all. I might have to text you and see what tricks you have to get like a good ticket because I feel like I would. Over, way overpay because I don't know anything about it. But, um, but anyways, I, the only reason why I'm interested is because I'm, I'm just like, it's also cool to be like, man, I, I got to see, you know, this player play when they were in college or whatever. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I still regret is never getting to see Tom and I've only been to one NFL game. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wish I would have been able to see, like, I got to see Tom Brady play in, in, mm -hmm. you know, whenever he, he played. Yeah. You know? That was one that's I, I never got to see him play either. And of course I'm, I'm from Michigan. I never got to see him play for Michigan because we had already moved. But uh, yeah, he was a guy that I would love to. Be. He will be at the game on Sunday, actually calling the game. So man, that's crazy. What What are your thoughts on him? You know, I mean, how is he doing and all that stuff? Because I think you would be a good person to kind of. I think he. I think 
from from everything, you know, I didn't get to see much of the first game, but a lot of people said he kind of struggled in the first half of the first game and then kind of got his footing. And I watched the game last week and I thought he did a pretty good job. Um, you know, and it's one of those things I think you just, you get more comfortable. It's not like, you know, when Tony Romo jumped in and started doing it, he was like immediately, like he, he sounded like he'd been doing it for years and he was, he's calling, you know, plays and stuff like that. He's, you know, they're going to do this and then they'd end up doing it and it happens all the time. You know, um, Tom will probably, he'll probably improve a little bit more, I think. And, you know, it's hard to try and fill the, the footsteps of, you know, Romo or Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman does such a great job. And, you know, everybody's always bagging on the announcers. They're, oh, they're, they're against my team and all this. Stuff. Aikman's one of the best. Um, and, so, uh, so what um, would you say that Tony Romo is a way better uh, sports announcer? What, what's his title? Uh, basically, he's like the color commentator. Would you say that he's way better at that than when he was a quarterback or what? Like at being a quarterback. <laughs> at being a quarterback. You know, he, he got a lot of undue criticism as a quarterback. He, he really, if you go back and look at his numbers, his numbers were great, you know, and it, it, it almost isn't like an individual thing when it comes to the postseason with the Cowboys. Now it's almost like an organizational thing because they get to the postseason and, and something just happens. And that's extended well beyond Tony Romo yeah. being I there. mean, even Dak right now, I feel yeah. like. And he's, and he puts up the numbers. He puts up, he plays great in the regular season, although this season's been a little bumpy for him. He's, um, he's already got the money in the bag. But he's, he's, got like, the, he's got the money. He's got a lot of money. He's <laughs> the highest, highest paid player in the NFL, right? Yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about that the, your career, you've seen a lot of different changes, right? I feel that when you started, um, it was super easy for somebody like in, on, in the news to just like have a personal brand because people see you, you know, whether it's in the morning, you know, around lunchtime or at night. Um, and so people kind of like, you know, even, even though they don't know you at all, like they kind of mm -hmm. learn to like you, right? Like yeah. how, how many times, uh, do you go out and like people recognize you and you just like, and you've never met these people just because they watch you in the news. It's, it's quite often. Um, and you know, people always ask, they're like, they're like, I bet this gets annoying, but, uh, you know, I, I like watching you do it. I'm like, it's not annoying at all because you know, you're, it's, it's nice to connect with people that are on the other side that you don't get to see yeah. when you're, when you're doing your job. Um, the people that are out there watching, I love meeting them and, um, yeah, it, it happens quite a bit. And nowadays it happens a lot because of this segment we're doing, uh, lunch on a budget. That's what you were telling me. Tell me a little about that. I, I've never heard of it. Basically the premise is we're trying to find places where you can get lunch for 10 bucks or less. It can creep above 10 bucks, you know, cause it's just, it's hard to find places that it's just, you can keep it below, especially if it's a sit down restaurant you got to have to leave a tip and. So yeah, basically every week we do a story where we find lunch for around 10 bucks. We go to different restaurants and we get submissions from people. They send in, right, well, tell us your favorite restaurant where you get lunch on a budget. We have a list of like 170 restaurants that we haven't gone to yet and that we've got for the next several years that people have sent to us. And I'm not kidding, everywhere I go, this is what people, hey, where are you going to lunch this week? Uh, we were out at the fair uh, at the Fox 23 booth. Hey, you doing uh, lunch on a budget here at the fair? And I'm like, you know, that's actually a pretty good idea. I might, I might have to try that because stuff at the fair is usually kind of expensive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was gonna say it's crazy that um, ten dollars now can barely get you anything. Now the the inflation report came out today and it came back at we're at two point four now and it's like it, it doesn't feel like it for the rest of the country. I feel mm -hmm. like for, um, but anyway. So let me ask you this: how many how many restaurants have you how many segments have you done of that? We've done. Close to 40, 40 so far. So give me your top three best best restaurants that you can get something wow. under $10. I, I love them all. I love them all. Like I they're, they're, I kind of feel like they're all my children. Um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting but no, that answer. But no, um, uh, Trencher's Deli. You can't go wrong with Trencher's okay. Deli. Cause that's just, it's just such a staple here in Tulsa. It's so good. We went yesterday, we went to uh, El Viejo's in Broken Arrow. I haven't uh, been there. And they've got lunch specials for six ninety nine, and you get quite a bit of food. That one was really good. Um, Empire Slice House, uh, the pizza place, uh, they always deliver. I'll say those three, but with the, the caveat that every other place we've hit, I, I love them all. Chicken Salad Chick, that's another one. That was really good. Is there any you wouldn't recommend? No. 
No, all of them. All of them. They all have something to offer. Uh, they all had really good food, uh, really good hospitality. We did. I also did a, a thing a few years back with Danny Boy O'Connor called Burger Brothers. Different premise. We would basically just go to different burger joints around town and sample those. Same same deal. Every place we went to was delicious. We did like thirty five of those, I think. Do you know a guy named Stephen Hester, nine one eight agent? I think that's what he. I think the the name is familiar. So um, he 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 kind of blew up on social media because he was doing like I'm trying to find the best burger in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see how you guys just compare because I ask him that all the time and and I think his number one here in in like the Tulsa area. Um, it, it is probably the best burger that, that I, that I've ever had. So what, what are some of your favorites? I like Hank's. Hank's is great. Okay. So I've only tried that once, but I didn't eat there. And then I live in Jinx. So I drove out. So you there. drove out and yeah, and it, then it makes Steven, a difference. It makes yeah, a no, difference. Steven was like, no, you can't rate a burger if you don't eat it. In there. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> I gotta have to try it again. It's so, kind of like people in California when they, it's like a lot of people slam in and out burger because they eat it when they get home. But it's like. You want to eat in and out burger, you've got to eat it within like five minutes. Yeah, it does a big difference. You just, you got to, you got to eat it quick. Um, Weber's is always a great one. I don't think, is that on Brookside? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I've been there. That's the one where they have like the line that it's like an orange, uh, orange sign. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been there. I need to try that. Now. That's why I highly recommend that one. Um, I really liked happy burger and Sepulpa is really good. I haven't been there. Um, so his, his number one was uh, OMG in Owasso. Have you tried that? See, we did it. I, when we did it, OMG wasn't. I don't think OMG was around. But I've gotten recommendations for that to do you, lunch on a budget there. You, you, I don't even know how much it is. But even if it's burgers, thirty dollars, like I would pay for it. It's that good. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. But I'm try um, that. so so whenever you go and do this lunch on a budget things, do you have like a like the camera crew following you? Or like mm -hmm. how does that how does that work? Like do they film? The entire lunch, like how do, how does that work? Basically, we we kind of set it up outside. We go in. They get us uh, ordering. Um, they get them preparing the food in the back, and then bringing the food out, or me picking up the food, and then I kind of do a little math equation over my shoulder with the taxes and and all that, and add it up, and and then I take a bite and nod at the camera and say this is really good and i haven't had to i haven't had to lie about the food being good because it's been fantastic that's awesome so how long um how much footage do they get and then how long is the segment uh the segment it depends the segment can sometimes run 130 sometimes it runs three um, we've got one coming up it's kind of a different take on it um where i did it with uh, taylor hansen and he took us to food on the move and cooked for us okay he actually made the food wow uh, and it kind of highlights what food on the move is all about. And, you know, we, we were able to show how much the meal was that he made. Um, and that one's, I think that one's going to air, I believe next week. And that one's about five minutes long. So gotcha. And then how, how, how much footage do they normally get? Like 30 minutes, probably it's usually probably, yeah, 20, 20 to 30 minutes worth. So that goes back to my question as I, as I was saying, like when you started, you, you pretty much people in your shoes are the only people that um, had the opportunity to let's say create a personal brand because mm -hmm. in my opinion that's what a personal brand is it's like it doesn't matter what you do whether you're a news anchor whether you're a loan officer a doctor whatever and then you're walking down the the street and then people you know some people recognize you they're like oh hey you know this is i know that person from their personal brand mm -hmm. um now it's a completely different uh, world because you don't need to be a news anchor to create yeah. a personal brand. Mm -hmm. And then you don't, back then you probably did need the, the camera crew to follow you around mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Now you can just pull out your phone and yeah. then do pretty much something similar to that. So my question to you, you being an OG of like personal brand, how important is a personal brand no matter what your title of you know, job description is. Uh, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a, it's a huge part of, of everyday life. I mean, especially in my business, um, you've got to, you have to connect with your viewers um, in a way that makes them want to watch again, but you've also got to be genuine and authentic and real. And I think that's, that's always what I've kind of gone after is just being that, you know, genuine type person uh, that when they watch you on TV, Hey, that's the kind of person, you know, I'd go have a beer with or something like that. Um, and, and I, th I think, you know, 
so that's early on. I think that was probably, that was probably my brand was trying to make people laugh a little bit. Cause when I did sports, that was kind of a goal. Obviously a sportscaster tries to make people laugh a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's extremely important. And nowadays, like you said, it's not just, you know, the person in movies or the person in, you know, radio or the person that, uh, you know, is running for office for, for example, uh, it's, you know, anybody, it's anybody, anybody's got access. Anybody's got one of these phones. Uh, they, they can, they can create their own brand. You just go to TikTok or go to Instagram and you, you can find them all over the place. It's, it's a, it's definitely a different world now than when I started in the business. Do you uh, think that starting out in the sports realm of things that, because as a sports uh, newscaster, you don't have, you don't have like a, do you have a teleprompter still? You do, but when you're out in the field, you, you generally don't have something like that. So you, there's a lot of ad libbing w- when you're doing sports. Cause I feel like you're able to pretty much show more of who you are rather than if you're just like a straight anchor and you're just reading the news and you're kind of maybe a little like maybe nervous slash like uptight cause you just want to make sure you don't mess things up and stuff. Do mm-hmm. you think that, um, like how does, how does the news anchor even like try to show really who they are with, with all the, like everything is scripted of what you're saying. So you've got, yeah, you've got your scripted content, but it's, it's the interactions with your co-anchor, your interactions with your reporters or your weather folks. Like a lot of it is the, the chit chat as you're going to weather. Um, you try to, they, you know, what they try to do is they try to put stories as you're going to weather, you know, where you can chit chat with each other a little bit, stuff that's a little more light, maybe a little more uh, fun to talk about um, and have a laugh about things like that. Um, So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is, it's an interesting balance because you are, you're trying to make sure you, you, you're delivering serious news. I mean, most of the news these these days, what you're talking about on TV is pretty serious stuff. And so you have to maintain that balance of, you know, delivering it, you know, in a serious way. Uh, And, and, you know, you've got to feel too, as you're reading these stories, you know, they, they, they encourage you to kind of, you know, not, not go overboard with it, obviously, but let your, let your feeling, if you, if you've got something to say about it, that's, you know, like a, you see video of a, a, you know, somebody rescuing a dog from, you know, a river or something like that. I mean, that's something anybody can can connect with because it's, it's, you know, it's a scary situation and everybody's happy at the end because the dog is safe. Uh, and then, you know, when you're on the air talking about that, um, it's, it's just, it's a natural reaction that you have, uh, to, to be happy and to kind of have a smile on your face. So that's the thing that people can connect with the most as far as like people that are just trying to just get, get through it pretty much and just be, you know, have no emotion on that. So the more, the more you can show emotion and truly be yourself, the more, yeah. probably successful you're going to be. Exactly. And that's the reason I'm asking that is because um, I feel like a lot of business owners, especially like even in my business, like people are always thinking like, I need, I know I need to do social media. Like I need, I know I need to do marketing, but it, to me, it, and I feel like why I've been, you know, blessed to do what I've, you know, done in the last couple of years is because it's, I always think it's like, I'm not creating this video to try to get a client. Like I'm, I'm doing this video to, to give value to people because think about in your shoes, you as a new anchor, as a news anchor, people are watching you Mm -hmm. because you're giving them value, whether Mm -hmm. it's like update on the sports or, or the news to what's going on, what happened this week. So that's the only reason people, people really don't care, you know, what you look like. They don't care about, you know, how many kids you have. They don't even know if you have any kids. They don't, they're just, most people that are looking at you and that like you, they like you because they started watching you because you're giving them value. Mm-hmm. But so many business owners, and I'm specifically talking about business owners, but we all know that there's so many people with personal brand that they kind of started it by just picking up their phone and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I have an agent that her daughter's like a junior in high school and she has like 2 million followers on TikTok and she goes to Bixby High School and she literally just posts the, I mean, literally like the dumbest <laughs> videos and she gets like millions of likes and she, she, she's already getting paid, um, for, from these, uh, 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 brands that are like, Hey, we'd like for, you know, for you to, you know, uh, promote our product and we'll pay you and all this stuff. And it's like, you didn't really even have to like do anything. You're yeah. just like messing around on your phone. But I'm talking about business owners that they think I need to like market, uh, meaning like I just need to get on 
video and just sell to people. And I feel like that's the worst type of like quote unquote marketing you can do because you're never going to connect with people like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I ha I do have a couple questions, uh, that I did think of that I, I'm curious on. You said one of the things that you, um, that you, it took you a while, but, but I feel like now you're able to be more of yourself. It's like, you're never going to be perfect a hundred percent of the time on air, especially if you're on there for, you said five hours. I didn't know you were on, on yeah, air I, for that long. I'm on, I'm on from four thirty to nine. And then again, from 11 to eleven thirty. So five hours a day. Yeah. And my first, you know, this was when I was making the transition from, uh, sports to news, uh, and Sterling was my co-anchor. And I, I was trying to get through every newscast and just like, just flawless, not mess up anything. And I mean, it's just, it, she kind of taught me, you're going to mess up. It's not, it's not possible to get through a five hours of news to, you know, without messing up at some point. Every single day too. Every day, every day. And so you have to have that mentality of, all right, well, I mean, this is, I, I can strive for perfection, but reaching it is another story. So, so that's the goal every day is to just try and do the best you possibly can. And if you mess up, then, you know, you just, you just keep going and, and you, and you put in your rear view mirror and you don't think about it. And I feel like that's also when you can relate to people the most. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, but let me ask you this. I make are, fun of myself a lot well, when I, when I, if I mess up, if I stumble over, so it's like easy for me to say, you that, know, stuff like that, <laughs> that, that, that makes it all that much better. But let me ask you, what are your most memorable, we'll call them memorable bloopers that you can think of where you were the furthest thing from perfect. Oh, wow. There was a time where, <laughs> and I don't know, I, I think I got distracted and I, and I, it was right when all of the Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky stuff was going on. Oh, so this is like, this is a while back. And I was doing sports. So you're probably thinking, well, how did, how did that play into it? Um, well, at the end of a sports cast, sometimes when you're being wrapped, you're trying to hurry, you're trying to spit out the words. And we were talking about the Olympics and I was supposed to be talking about Tara Lipinski. And I said, Olympic gold medalist, Monica Lewinsky, instead of Tara Lipinski. And we, I just paused for a second and then me and the anchors, cause it was, it was part of the crosstalk, just all busted out laughing. It was, it was, it was so dumb and, and laughable. And now that I look back on it, I'm like, you know, everybody makes mistakes. There was another time. This was great too. Um, we were doing a story. It was an entertainment story on family guy, which of course is on Fox 23. And <laughs> And I think it was, I think it was that Johnny Depp was appearing on Family Guy as uh, Edward Scissorhands. And so we're talking about it. And the video they pulled for us to talk over was, <laughs> it was an episode where, uh, where one person couldn't hold on to their lunch and then another person, and it was a, like a, a chain reaction. So this is on the screen while we're talking about this. And we all look at the screen. We're, we look up at the video and we're like, oh, come on. We didn't need, you didn't need to see that during breakfast. Come on. And then somebody else, you know, and then, and then we had to toss to weather. And Michael Sager, he's not at our station anymore, but uh, still great friends with him. Uh, he uh, couldn't, he hardly could make it through the weather cast. He was laughing so hard because it was just, it was, it was ridiculous. And every year around the same time we posted on social media just so everybody can see it again. Really? Yeah, That's it's, it's ridiculous. Have you ever had like one where you didn't know that the camera was on like pretty much on air? Cause I've seen a couple of those, even local ones. Too. Oh yeah. That happens. That happens where you'll be, you'll be looking down. You'll be, you know, and we, people don't know this. They may not know this is that in the desk, we actually have computer monitors that were and computers and that's how we're looking at scripts. They're actually built into the desk. There's a glass panel. So the, the wait, so you're not talking about the, uh, not the teleprompter. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha Teleprompters gotcha. are on the front gotcha. of the cameras. But these are actual just actual computers we have at the desktop so we can look at scripts and wire copy and and you know if there's some sort of breaking news we can find details on it and things like that um but uh, there are times where you'll be looking down at something and then either either because you're not paying attention for a split second or because they pop up the wrong camera you're you're on camera and you just kind of oh hi hi i didn't see you there so do you, is there like a light that tells you that when, like when you're on? There is, there is. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, okay. You've covered, uh, how many stories do you think you've covered over the last uh, 29 years to be wow. exact? Just, I mean, just, just a guesstimate. I, I would say you talk about like sporting events. 
in addition to other stuff that I've covered in terms of like stuff that I read on the air, I would say, uh, 50,000, 50,000. I mean, cause you, you talk about each day, the, yeah. the, just the, just the little 20 second stories you read. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so that's, a, that's thousands way, and thousands way of more hours. than I, than I, than I was thinking, but I knew it was a big number, but I'm asking because I'm curious, is there any of them that stick out to you that like really just kind of, you, you know, stuck with you? What, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, something horrible, right? But yeah. like, just, just like for some reason, like I still remember this story that I did seven years ago, 17, you know what I mean? So the ones that stick with me and, and it, and it, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that when, you know, you become a parent, it, you know, certain stories kind of touch you in a different way. So when you hear stories about parents losing their kids, things like that, it just, I mean, it just eats away at you. Uh, it's, those are the hard ones to get through. I remember a story, there was really bad flooding here. It was probably 16 or 17 years ago. And it was a story about a, a, a mother who had her child pulled away from her in flood water and washed away. And it was just, it was, you know, both of us started tearing up on the air. It was just, it, there are certain stories like that, that just, you don't forget because you just, you put yourself in the shoes of the person that's going through that. And you just, you can't imagine the pain that they're feeling and it, it sticks with you. It really does. It's, I have to, you know, when I go home, I have to kind of desensitize a little bit. I have to watch something funny to kind of, you know, get back into a, a normal mindset because some days can be rough with the, with the news. You know, we talk all day today about the hurricane, uh, you know, and it, it's just, there are some days that are a lot tougher than, than others. Would you say every day though, you're covering at least like, let's say uh, most of the time it's, it's bad stuff just to, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, and we, we actually specifically, uh, started a segment a couple of years ago called good news. And it's basically, we have a reporter go out and find stories, positive stories, happy stories, because, you know, we heard that from the viewers, the viewer, we know the viewers, you know, there's news that they need to hear about. And there's, you know, it's a lot of it's bad news. And they, they talk about, you know, the news is always bad. Well, it is. I mean, there's, there's a lot of bad news. So you try to balance it out with stuff like that. And, but and it's, it's, it, it's inspiring stuff, things that, things that make people feel good, at, you know, about their morning. But wouldn't you say too that people, the, the good feel stories probably maybe get less views? Um, you know, some of them, some of them get some pretty good hits on the website. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would agree though. You, you, most of the time you go online, you go on social media, you go on, you know, Twitter and, the stuff everybody's talking about is the bad stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, those get a lot of hits, the, the important stuff. And then that's the thing too. There's a, there's a way to look at it as, you know, it is bad news or, you know, it is rough news to take, but it's also the important stuff. Like when we have, you know, storms that come through here, uh, I mean, there's a lot of important information there about people, you know, where they can go for shelter, where they can go for water, things like that. So, you know, you try to, you try to balance out the, the fact that it's a tough story with trying to help people as well. And did that take you a long time? Because you don't have to be on the news to come home and feel like, man, today was a rough day. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. I, feel, I feel like anybody, mo most people listening can relate to that. Did that take you a long time to be able so you, you, one of the things that you're very proud of as well too, which, you know, um, congrats, you know, you and your wife been married 28 years. 28 years. Yeah. So you literally, uh, have been doing news at the same time. About the same. I, we, we literally when, when I went from K 10 to KOCO, I worked for two days and then I got married when it was all, it was all, they were all like, we just want you to come work a couple of days for the start of football season. Then you guys can get married and take your honeymoon and all that stuff. So yeah, it was like, it's, it's basically a year short of, of how long I've been in the business. So congrats again on Thank that. You. And you're, you're about 20 years ahead of me. So, um, <laughs> and, and, um, so with that being said, did it take you a long, did it take you long to be able to come home and be able to turn that off per se? Yeah. You know, at first it was tough because when I did sports, we would, we hardly saw each other because they call, they call, um, you know, the wives of sportscasters, football widows, because you're basically, we're working the weekends. They're at home on the weekends. I'm, you know, I'm working 
from about one to 11 each day. And she's working from, you know, nine to five. So our, you know, we overlap with our, our shifts. So, you know, there was a time where we didn't see each other all that much. And then when I moved over to news, it completely changed everything. Um, but then of course the, you know, the subject matter you're talking about is a little bit different. And, um, you know, I, I always tried not to bring, bring stuff home. Um, it's, you know, and that's the beauty of the place that I work. It's always been a, 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 my coworkers, it's just been a positive work environment. And I think that helps a lot too. Yeah. Cause one thing is just talking about something negative And the other thing is, is, you know, the actual environment you're, you're in, right. Um, if it's, if people are being actually like, you know, toxic or if they're being, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, encouraging and you just like to be around those people. So mm -hmm. Ron, thanks so much for coming. Oh, and absolutely. Uh, the, the last question I have, I'm, I'm just curious. I feel like I'm, I'm going to know the answer as far as like what you're going to say, but, and maybe people listening as well, but w what's your favorite thing about your job? I, 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 I would say the, the people I work with and, and getting to meet the viewers, like at the fair, you know, last week, just kids coming up and I watch you every morning, little kids saying that it's like, I mean, there's, that's just, it's mind blowing still to this day that this little kid, this five-year-old is watching me. And then I'm, I'm looking at his parents. I was like, his parents may have been, you know, five years old when they started watching. And then I start thinking, wow, I'm really old. <laughs> But well, no, because I was going to say, well, now you're talking about this little kid, but now you probably have 30 to 35, maybe mm -hmm. 40 that they're like, I've been watching you. My I've heard, I've heard that a lot more recently. It's like, I've been watching you since I was a kid. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and you're like, I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, well, thank you. Thank you. First off. And then, you know, and I crawl inside my shell in my mind and curl up in the corner uh, because yes, I'm getting older, but yeah, I, I'd say that. And just, it's, like I said, the people I work with, I've, Michelle's been my co-anchor for 13 years now. And it's just, it's wonderful working with her. I've, I've had great people to work on the air with. It's just been, it's been a blast. Man, well, thanks again for coming. Where can people find you if they want to get in contact with you? Just social media? Or? Social media, you can uh, look me up on uh, Instagram. I've got a TikTok, I've got uh, X, I've got uh, Facebook. Um, yeah, just everything, uh, Look up. just look it all up. There we go. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you.